This is Zhao Onsen. Hi there, good morning. This is Zhao Onsen. An onsen is a Japanese hot spring. So there are various towns around Japan with the name onsen. I was recently at Kusatsu Onsen. And so the onsen is the hot spring and then the uh, towns with the natural hot water. As you can see here, all of this uh, steam billowing up. And so, there are the onsens, public baths, various ones all throughout the uh, town. And as you saw there at the beginning, then there is one inside of the Ryokan that I am staying at right there. I'm not sure if that is technically considered an onsen when it is a, you know, more private kind of bathtub. But uh, anyways, this is a very lovely little town. Here is a little story about uh, the naming of the creek, the hot uh, creek. Today is November 6th. It is 40 degrees Fahrenheit. That is just 4 Celsius. It is definitely getting chilly. This is also a ski town. Now I can see there these towers with cables. Not sure exactly if those are the ski lifts and runs right there. I need to investigate. So I will be exploring around today for a little bit before uh, going and hopping in some hot water and then staying warm in my room. But uh, I definitely want to poke around and see what there is to see here. It is a lot quieter than Kusatsu, which was quite busy. So far I've just been in the uh, onsen or hot tub, bath, whatever, here at my place. But there are various ones around that are actually free. There are three public ones that are free if you just have a ticket from your hotel. I think this might be one of them. People there uh, just soaking their feet. There you go. Shimoyu. Public bath. And here again, the hot water steam. Let's see how uh, sulfurous it is a bit. Not as much as Kusatsu, it seems. So my ryokan there, the uh, lodging, a uh, ryokan is a traditional Japanese lodge. And I think that oftentimes, or maybe most of the time, then boards included, so food. So when I booked it, I didn't realize that. 
so it is kind of expensive. It is $102 per night. But uh, I think that, that actually includes food because when I checked in yesterday, then he asked me, did you want food included? And I wasn't sure if that was going to be an extra charge or what. And I said, no, thanks. Also because I wanted to uh, go to some of the restaurants around here. And then this morning, then when I was just leaving there a few minutes ago, then he came up to me and said that he was giving me a discount. He didn't really explain why, but I think it must be because he's subtracting the uh, board element, the food charge. So in that case, $102 is not so bad for a uh, lovely traditional Japanese lodge with a very nice, uh, you know, onsen included and I'm not sure two meals, three meals, whatever, but with food included. All right, so uh, I am going to assume that the reason that it is so quiet now is because it is not the ski season yet, because it is like a popular ski town and you can see all of these obvious uh, hotels, lodges, etc. This is probably another one of the free public baths. Maybe that is where I would need to put my ticket. I guess maybe it's 1100 Japanese yen. That is like $8. But uh, first, I want to walk around. I just soaked an hour or so ago, so uh, don't need to right now. All these cool buildings and stairs and steam everywhere. Another Ryokan, I guess. Got the gloves on, it is that chilly. Okay, so I guess this is just uh, going to another Ryokan. It looks really nice. Let's see if we can just get a little uh, glimpse inside. Wow, it looks spectacular. Really nice one. I guess it's probably more expensive than uh, where I'm staying. I love the uh, dark hardwood. So you can imagine it must get a lot busier here during uh, peak season. And so while I wander around here, then I wanted to talk about... Oh man, it's not going to be just a wander, it's going to be a trek. So I wanted to uh, talk about my first onsen experience which was not here, but in Kusatsu, which is like further south of here, a few hours away from Tokyo. I was in Kusatsu day before yesterday and took various trains and buses to get here. So this is my second time to Japan. I was here for a month in 2018, but it was in the summer. And so there wasn't the same uh, impetus to uh, go to the onsens. I mean, it would still be worth doing, but I never ended up doing it on that trip. So I got to Kusatsu and there was also a private bathtub in the hotel where I was staying there. Not as nice as this one here, a very kind of basic, just concrete hole. And so I used that one, but I guess that isn't really technically an onsen. The onsens are the public baths not the little ones in hotels, to the best of my understanding. And so I don't really consider soaking in the little uh, bathtub there as my first onsen experience. But you could not film at the public onsens. And so on my uh, last day in Kusatsu, then I went to one of the ones that I showed in a previous video as far as showing outside. But uh, later in the day, then I went there and used it. But you can't uh, film inside there. And so I wanted to just uh, talk about it, kind of explain what it was like. But let's get to the top first, so I can stop puffing and puffing.
So there is a sky cable, it's called, somewhere around here. And so I will get over there. It must be related to the uh, ski slopes. Now, whether or not it will actually be running now, we'll find out when we get there. Tsukawa's Onsen, shrine diagram, wow. Really cool, especially with these just gorgeous fall colors. And so, uh, there were two prices for the onsen that I went to. The uh, public area was 1,000 Japanese yen, that is $7. And then you could get a private tub, which was 2,000 or $15. So very, very reasonable. I went with the public one, but I think that the uh, private one was the incredible images that I saw and showed in previous videos of like hardwood, like really nice, smaller little square tubs embedded in this like hardwood deck area. I never saw that. And I think because those must have been the private tubs. Tsukawa Onsen Shrine on June 26, 863 AD. Tsukawa Onsen Shrine of the Dua province of the sixth rank is hereby granted the fifth rank. So does that mean they were demoted from the sixth to the fifth? I don't know. The gods Okinanushu no Mikoto are enshrined here. Every year on June 26, there's a traditional festival held at the shrine. In a way, this is a great time to be here as long as you're not expecting to ski because almost nobody here Probably prices are cheaper. You get a little taste of winter with that chilly air, but uh, not as cold as later, of course. So, you uh, buy your ticket, you leave your shoes near the uh, counter where you bought your ticket, that is typical throughout Japan is taking off your shoes before entering various, uh, you know, homes and also onsens and whatnot. And then you walk uh, through these halls and then you go to the men's area if you are a man. So I don't know if uh, sometimes maybe they are mixed, men and women and children, or not. Maybe somebody can uh, clarify that, but uh, in this case then, it was separated, and I think that most of the time, then it is separated. So you go into the uh, area where you are going to leave your clothes and everything because it is a nude experience. It doesn't even really seem to be clothing optional, like you would probably be kind of shunned for wearing shorts, I don't know. I mean, probably nothing would happen, but uh, it's expected. And so uh, there's this big room with shelves and wooden boxes where you can put your clothes and jacket and whatnot. There are also lockers that you can uh, get. So I got one of the lockers and it was an interesting key lock. It was a wooden, like a square thing, like about the size of your hand, like that big. This piece of wood with something written on it, not the numbering that we use in the West, the Arabic numerals so it didn't have numbers on it so they all had different writings so maybe that was the traditional ancient oh here we go ski lift so I don't know if that was the uh, traditional older Japanese numbering because they do use the Arabic Western numbers on the money and throughout Japan so I'm not sure if that was the old numbers or maybe there were words saying something. Anyways, it was hard to distinguish matching up my key to the locker. I had to just kind of remember the location as opposed to figuring out by the number or the writing. And there is a uh, ski lift running over there, so let's uh, go give that a try. And so I had no instructions about how things work there, so I was just kind of winging it. And so I see the door going into the actual hot tub area. And so I go in there with my uh, sarong as a towel. 
there were no hooks to hang your towel right there by the door because you don't want to like walk out into the area all wet on the like hardwood floor where the uh, boxes of your things are. But then there were no places to hang your towel right there. And so I was a little confused, like, okay, what do I do with my towel? So I go ahead and step into the area. And so you can see a nice uh, big uh, pool, not like big, big, but like medium sized shallow for sitting in. And then there are these showering spots instead of what you expect, you know, a Western locker room with a tiled floor and you stand up and there's a shower there. Instead, you sit on this tiny little stool and there's a mirror like right in front of you, but like the top of the mirror is here. So it's like this, this mirror, like this high like this. And then there's a shower head next to it. And then like a little bucket there. And so that is the showering area. And then uh, there was this one little shelf with basically nothing on it, no other towels or anything. And so I put my towel there. I don't know what everyone else uh, did with their towels, but I did notice that uh, they had these really tiny little pieces of cloth, not full towels, like one and a half feet wide by two feet, something like that. And I think that that is just what they were using to dry off. Okay, here we go. And so here is the Zhao Sky Cable. Excellent. Okay, I guess maybe I will continue this story while sitting on the ski lift. Okay, this is it. Konnichiwa. Hello. Thank you so much. Okay. All right, all right, all right. This is cool. Thank you very much. Arigato. Bye bye. So I go in and uh, do the shower thing and then uh, go into the hot pool and you can just like lay down, sort of, I mean, I guess you don't want to put your head or hair in the water. I think that that is a uh, faux pas at the onsens, but it is a very shallow pool and uh, so you can just like kick back in it and kind of lean back against the uh, side of it and then there was also an outside uh, pool as well and there was a cold pool that was really quite cold almost too cold to get into I love going back and forth from the hot to the cold that is like the, the best thing for me when it comes to you know hot springs that I go to in the US I tried to get into the uh, cold one the first time and it was just like uh, no it's not happening so I got out and then uh, from there I think that I went into uh, the sauna and so a, a very very hot sauna so the uh, Japanese like it hot I noticed that uh, the uh, onsen or bathtub in my hotel in uh, Kusatsu there then it was like almost too hot to get into I was able to turn on a cold water shower that was right there and uh, squirt some water in there that uh, cooled it down just a little bit I like it pretty hot as well, um, but uh, it was just like a degree or two more than I preferred, but still very nice and better than being not hot enough. There's nothing more disappointing than going into a hot tub, especially when it's cold out and uh, it's kind of, you know, not quite hot enough. And then as you soak, it kind of tends to cool down as far as your expectation. Like you start to just like crave that, you know, hotter, uh, temperature, especially for once you get out, you want to be like nice and nice and toasty warm stepping out into the cold air. So I'm fine with the uh, temperatures, but uh, they are you know hotter than than uh, the normal like hot tubs in gyms or whatever that are usually like 40 Celsius, 104 Fahrenheit. These were definitely like two, three degrees hotter than that. And then the sauna as well was like really hot. Like there's a lot of saunas you get into and you go into them and at first you're like, hmm, it's not really that hot. And then as you sit there for five, 10 minutes, then you start to really like heat up. But this was, you know, you step in there and right away it was just hot. And so I was in there for whatever, seven, eight, nine minutes, something. And then went out to the outside uh, pool there. So as far as like the atmosphere, then uh, you can talk, people talking, but definitely, you know, keeping their voices quiet. People were, you know, nice, nobody looking at me weird or anything as a foreigner. 
So an all around just really uh, cool experience. And I'm looking forward to more. So I'll definitely go to uh, one or two here and then maybe elsewhere. I mean, there's so many of these onsen towns around Japan. It is just a uh, integral tradition, part of the uh, Japanese culture. So I definitely recommend it when you come to Japan. So I think that there's a lake up there. I got the two-way ticket for 1,500 yen. That is $10. And so I'll just like hike around up there and then uh, take the lift back. And look what we got. Snow on the ground. Awesome. Winter is a coming. It is chilly. Must be around freezing up here. Thank you. Okay. What do we got here? Cold weather. Nobody around. Just like a hint of sleet, kind of. It was raining a little bit. Yeah, just got a, a raindrop in the eye. Like sprinkling sleet or something and a bitter chill wind man oh man i don't know uh, how long i'm gonna <laughs> stay up here let's see if we can find that lake she gave me a map i showed a little lake I'm not sure how far so uh hmm which way to go well i think that up will be more interesting yeah, there's like little frozen things in the air. Not exactly snowflakes, not hail. This is an experience, man. This is just kind of tranquil yet eerie at the same time. Invigorating yet uh, just feeling the cold and uh, thinking about looking forward to the Hot tubs. So this is the ski area. Definitely similar to a comeback in the winter. It's a really cool ski area because it's kind of, you know, has some character to it. Not just the uh, ski slopes, but you have these different roads. I guess these would be runs here, unless these are plowed and uh, for driving on. Not sure. And here's the lake. A small but very pretty one. The wind is picking up, the uh, snowflakes, whatever, are increasing ever so slightly. Uh huh. Interesting. Must be a nice spot in the summer. Looks good for swimming in. And then uh, thickness, I guess, here. Very cool. I have to say, I'm starting to uh, like this more than Kusatsu somehow. It has a kind of more quaint uh, feeling. Feels a little more remote. Less touristy. I mean, obviously now, especially, but it feels a little more up in the mountains. Not sure if the elevation is more or not, but uh, I like the uh, forest, the kinds of trees and uh, the landscapes in general and all these big wooden lodges. And these snowdrops are definitely increasing. That would be cool if it full on snowed today. Konnichiwa. 
It is turning into a storm here. Okay, another lodge. A very cozy looking one. All right, all right, all right. I wonder if they got some hot sake. But, it's like it's not here. I can't go inside right away. Let's do a little bit of a walk up uh, one of these trails. But that wind is biting and uh, it is steadily, steadily turning into a uh, real snowstorm here. Check it out. Awesomeness. Let's see up there or maybe over here. Well, I'm not going to get any views, that's obvious. I could hike up one of these steep hills and then aren't going to see anything, so... Uh, maybe just a quick poke around here. But I'm very curious to see the inside of that lodge. So this is basically exactly the scene that I was looking for on this trip to Japan. The last time was in summer. I went to uh, Osaka and Kyoto and Koyasan and Nara, where the deer roam free and climbed Mount Fuji and then Tokyo. Had a really amazing trip, but this time wanted to head north, being in November, get a taste of winter, go to some hot springs, and maybe see some snow. I was not expecting it to happen today. I thought maybe on Hokkaido Island is where I would get the uh, real winter weather, and I'm sure that I will there as well. But this is just kind of a uh, surprise of sorts. 15 minutes after walking through town, I'm up in the mountains in a snowstorm in the mist. Nobody around. So cool. So I just looked over to the right, and there's kind of a little path. And steps. Okay. This is now officially an adventure. Where does the mystery pass through the quiet, snow-covered woods go? Somebody put a lot of work into this thing. It's gotta go somewhere. Maybe it's just a walking path to the top. Or maybe it goes to a shrine or a secret private onsen. Hot tubs or hot springs in the snow is the best experience I'm reminded of uh, when I was in Iceland a year ago and went to the, well, the Sky Lagoon, that is the touristy one, and then also to the uh, public, uh, much cheaper ones, I forget what it was called, but that's when it was snowing, when I was in the outdoor hot tubs and swimming pool, like a lukewarm heated pool, but uh, swimming laps in the snow was just one of those really unique experiences. And so this trail seems to be a walking shortcut 
going to wherever this road is going because it keeps crossing the road. Huh. Well, maybe it's going there, whatever that says. Okay, just gonna go a little bit further. Trail getting fainter. And now we have a choice. And also a spot to get lost, if you don't pay attention. So this trail wraps around and it seems to be going back down. This way. But where do they all lead? Nothing much around here. Huh. Another trail. The road again. And then... What do we got here? A map. Okay. We are there. There is the lake. The lodges. The lifts. I guess these are just hiking trails for the summer, probably. Amazing Japan. Full of mystery and secrets to be discovered. Incredible. All right, I'm going to walk back down. Go get something hot to drink. Thank you, arigato. Steaming hot sake. Also called Nihonshu. Sake actually kind of means alcohol in general. So you can call it Nihonshu if uh, they're not sure which alcohol you want. The uh, rice wine, of course. <laughs> 